Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the 2023 Chrysler Pacifica e-hybrid and I'm here to tell you why this is better than maybe the competition from Toyota Sienna but absolutely better than the competition from Kia Telluride and Chevy Tahoe. Stay tuned to find out why. All right, gearheads, before I get too far into this one, I do want to thank Chrysler for delivering this one to us, not only to review for you today, but also for our 3,000 mile Route 66 road trip. Yes, this thing just got back from 3,000 miles up Route 66 from Amarillo to the beginning point in Chicago. You'll want to stay tuned for that video. But while I've got the hood open, let's address the elephant in the room. This is the e-hybrid. And no, this is not like the Jeep 4xE plug-in hybrids. This is kind of its own beast. So unlike the Jeep 4xE hybrids that use a two liter turbocharged four cylinder for their gasoline engine, mated to a, an electric battery and electric motor, this uses the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. So yes, V6 power still here in the hybrid version of the Chrysler Pacifica. That contrasts directly to the Toyota Sienna, which went all hybrid, not plug-in hybrid, but all hybrid when it got its refreshed in 2020, I do believe. So we get V6 power from a hybrid powertrain here in the Chrysler Pacifica. It is mated to a 16 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, a single electric motor powering the front wheels, and it produces 260 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. All that is routed through a, an electronic continuously variable transmission. And like I said, it is front wheel drive based. Now, comparing it to the Sienna, the most obvious competition, Sienna went all hybrid. Their versions are all wheel drive. Like I said, this one is front wheel drive. So there's a little bit of a difference there, but because of the instant electric torque on this thing, I can confirm it will do some burnouts and uh, spin some tires in inclement weather. So if inclement weather is something that you face very frequently, maybe you look at those all wheel drive Sienna options, but this V6 powered front wheel drive minivan is still a lot of fun. Closing the hood, the Pacifica gets the new updated face that came for the 2021 model year. The Pacifica has been around since the 2017 model year, replacing the old town and country minivan using a nameplate that was once used on a now sort of beloved by millennials, uh, now defunct crossover from the early 2000s. But all that to say, the Pacifica is a very handsome vehicle when you look at it. This is the top pinnacle trim. So we get a lot of brushed metal accents that look very nice on this one. And like I said, this one has seen 3000 miles of road trip use. So you might give me a little forgiveness when it comes to how clean this vehicle is. But coming in close, we can see LED running lights, LED headlights, but interestingly enough, incandescent turn signals. I do like all the brushed accents on this one though it gives it a nice classy look and you can see the updated Chrysler emblem here over top of that front facing camera for the 360 cameras on this one now I'm going to pull out just really quickly here because I will say I grew up in a 1992 Plymouth Grand Voyager that was about this color outside a very similar color inside so having this vehicle for a couple weeks was definitely like going back to my childhood I'm not gonna lie. Coming around to the side, this is perhaps the most conventionally styled of the minivans, whereas Kia has gone a little more SUV-ish, or at least that's what they're leaning into with their Carnival MPV. They don't even wanna call it a minivan. A little more boxier styling. Honda's got those funky rear windows that uh, when they brought them to market, they really wanted to call into the cool van factor from the 70s. And then again, Toyota Sienna, keep bringing it up. It has a lot of styling from the Supra minivan. We drove one of those, tested one of those out recently. I'll go ahead and link that video if you're watching this on YouTube. 
But this is a very conventionally styled minivan and there's nothing wrong with that. This thing cuts through the wind, it rides very nicely, and it's inoffensive. It's not overstyled. I kind of feel like that Sienna is a little bit overstyled, much like the Supra on which I said it shares a lot of design similarities. This being the e-hybrid model, we don't get the 20-inch wheels on the Pinnacle. We get 18-inch wheels. These are 235-60R18. They are a brand I've never really heard of. Uh, in Nexen, I, I have not seen a lot of those. I know I recently tested the plug-in hybrid Outlander from Mitsubishi that also had Nexen wheels. So perhaps this is a brand that's really leaning into uh, fuel efficiency for plug-in hybrids, but these are Nira's RH7As or Alphas. Very interesting, but they are wrapped around these nice polished 18-inch wheels. It's a nice classy look, again, here for the Pinnacle trim. You can see Pinnacle spelled out there on the driver's and passenger doors, the front doors on this one, and more brushed-looking uh, metal trim on this one. We get the brushed mirror caps, uh, the brushed uh, look around the windows. It is a very clean, very nice look. And you even get the brushed metal on the door handles all around. It is a very upscale, very classy, albeit a slightly older skewing minivan look. This is definitely not going to win any uh, awards when it comes to turning the heads of millennials when it comes to the design department but again it's very inoffensive coming over to the doors the rear doors this is the piece de resistance of uh, any minivan that is the sliding doors and we have multiple ways to get in you can pull the handle which will power open it you can push the button right there and that will open and close it you also get the buttons on the key fob so i can double click here and open it and there is also the button right here on the B pillar that I can push and close it right there. We'll get more into the interior here in a little bit, but they are very nice power operated doors. And you can see the track for the door is hidden under that third window back there in the back. There is only one wheelbase option for the Pacifica. Gone are the days of, like I mentioned earlier, Voyager and Grand Voyager, Caravan and Grand Caravan where the Grand denoted the longer wheelbase. There's only one three row wheelbase here on the Pacifica and this is it. Coming to the back, you see updated styling for the 2021 model year. You get that light bar that goes across the back, LED lights all the way back here in the back. Very nice look. And yes, we get that e-hybrid badge. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we're driving it, but Something that I just haven't been able to get over while we've been testing this. I keep reaching under here for the hatch release. I, I should just know that it's right there, but it also has a remote release on the uh, key fob and that allows you to get into the back. And while we're back here, I will talk about one of the big reasons why you may want to look at this versus the competition from Sienna or Kia Telluride or Chevy Tahoe. So when we got this, I did put a poll out on the YouTube channel. What is your road trip rig of choice? Minivan, SUV, or convertible? And SUV won out handily. I used a picture of the Telluride because that is a very popular crossover-based SUV. But uh, the Chevy Tahoe is perhaps the most popular truck-based SUV. And I will mention right here, with the storage down here where the seats actually fold into, this Chrysler Pacifica has 32.3 cubic feet of space with that third row up. Fold that third row down, you get 87 and a half cubic feet and a max of 140.5 cubic feet. Now, this being the e-hybrid, that second row does not stow and go into the floor. That's where the batteries are but they are removable, so you can take those out if you needed to use this as a cargo hauler because it does a great job at that. If you did not get the e-hybrid, you can get these stow-and-go seats, but I promised you a comparison to Kia Telluride. For comparison's sake, Kia Telluride only has 21 cubic feet in the back and 87 cubic feet total, so handily beat by this Pacifica. And the Chevy Tahoe, big, just huge, Three row SUV from Chevy, 25.5 with the seats up, 122.9 
total, 72.6 if you fold those third row seats down. But again, beaten handily by this Chrysler Pacifica. And oh yeah, it is super easy to fold these seats. So you pull this handle right here to release it and then it tips and folds into the floor and look at how much room that gives you. Again, you can do that here. Just one-handed operation, two modes, two levers, and you have tons of space. A relatively flat load floor back here. I would say of all the minivans, this is the nicest, cleanest fold into the floor unit that we've tested. The Sienna, their seats fold in a little bit differently. They, uh, I'll demonstrate here with my hand, instead of tilting back like these Pacificas do, they kind of fold in like that, leaving just a little bit of a gap in between the seat and the floor. And this is just a cleaner overall look. And you can see just how much room we have back here now. But I am gonna fold these back up and show you just how easy that can be done because I'm gonna be climbing back in here in just a moment. And I need to have those up to do so. And one last thing I really like on all Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, products is to put the hatch down there's a button here on the side well you don't have to jump if you can't reach the rear hatch before we go inside i do want to come up to the front and show you the charge port door because this is the hybrid after all it is a j1772 plug and our experience with it with our electron 48 amp v box charger uh, it will charge from empty in about eight hours it will charge on 110 with the chrysler supplied plug or with our convertible electron charger in about 12 hours overnight so again you get home you plug it in you're good to go in the morning and we'll talk more about range and how this thing drives when we get inside but now would be a good time to talk about our sponsor for this video and that is electron ev chargers they did supply us with this 110 240 convertible unit here that comes with a NEMA 1450 plug that you can see plugs in to the uh, adapter base right here. It also comes with a 110 household style plug so you can charge it at home or wherever you are on the go and you don't have to worry about what kind of plug situation you're moving into. You can learn more about them and all the different products they have supplied us with for testing and that they offer for your electric vehicle by visiting the link down in the description below. Any purchase helps our channel. We thank you a whole lot. All right, before we hop inside this one, I do wanna show you the key. It is a typical Chrysler key. I will say this is the only Chrysler model going forward into the 2024 model year as the 300 sedan is officially dead after the 23 model year. So I hope you like minivans if you like the Chrysler brand, but you can see we have lock, unlock, got your hatch release, remote start, and both of your buttons to open up the doors. And we've got a truck coming in. So when is a better time to climb in and get out of the noise of the outside here? So. Just because of the noise of that one, I will go ahead and tell you while in here, uh, this does have a proximity key. You can just put your hand on the back of the handle to uh, access the doors. And what is this guy doing? He is coming right up next to me. It will unlock uh, from putting your hand on the back of the door handle and then the button on the front door handles uh, will lock it back. I'm gonna go ahead, push the starts stop button here and let this thing fire up because it's the first day of summer. I'd say it's hotter than the 81 degrees out here that this says it is. But we are gonna go ahead and put on my ventilated front seat because whew, I'm sweating y'all. It, it is warm. I am gonna turn the fan speed down just a little so it's not blaring on camera. And I'm gonna work my way across from the door here, we've got lots of storage. We've got storage up here, storage down here. This is actually where you access the fuel door, which is a capless fuel filler system if you need it. Uh, really like that. It was uh, a really nice touch on our road trip, but a little bit of storage here, a little bit more storage down here. You can see enough for a parasol office and a bottle holder up there. We do get automatic windows all the way around. We do get a window lockout button because Tucker is now large enough, big enough to reach the window buttons from his child seat. Lock and unlock mirror controls with power fold. They do not fold at speed 
I uh, just thought I'd call that out because it's something I noticed. Two person memory here with a little bit of wood grain around the door handle, nice touch there. Coming around to over my left knee, we've got our light controls, our brightness controls, really simple to use there. And then coming to the steering wheel, we have a 2014 Jeep Cherokee and it has all the same controls as this 2023. So nine years later, still the same UI. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So this all controls the screen up there. If you've got your phone controls, your cruise control, your standard cruise, and your adaptive cruise. So if you wanna change your follow distance or engage your uh, Adaptive cruise control with stop and go, you can do that there. That is just your standard cruise control. On the back, you have your tuning and your volume on either side here. You do get some nice stocks here for your uh, blinkers, your washers, and all that good stuff. You can see we get a little helper screen in a uh, in between two analog gauges here. So no tack on the e-hybrid model. We just get a power gauge that shows you when you're uh, putting power back into the battery and when you're using it up. You can see here we are at 91% with 29 miles of range to go. When I first fired this up today to come out to film it before I went to go wash it, at 100% we were seeing 38 miles of range, but again, it is a nice warm first day of summer here. So that range has started to deplete and just sitting here with the air conditioning on, it's using up that percentage rather quickly. But you can see from our time in it, 3,091.3 total miles of that 626.8 were completely electric. So the way this thing works is a little bit different than the 4xe systems employed by Jeep with their two liter turbo four. There are no buttons anywhere to engage e-save where you can just save that electric power. There's no button to automatically regenerate that if you are on a long road trip and you wanna have 100% when you arrive in a city environment. Uh, there is no uh, full EV mode, this thing pretty much you fire it up and it uses all of that electricity first before employing that gasoline engine. The only uh, driver selectable mode that you get in this is low, which engages max regen on this, which gives you somewhat of a one pedal driving. As you let off the accelerator, it will start regenerating power and putting that back into the battery. So a, a nice system overall. Again, we did just get back from a long 3000 mile road trip and I left it in L most of the time. To actually do that, you actually had to turn it all the way and push in and turn to get to L, but you see max regen on and you get that little battery icon up there to let you know you're in max region. Otherwise, if you put it in drive, it tells you max region is off. But go ahead and put that dial back in park. Not my favorite interface. I know there are some push buttons in Tahoe. Uh, Telluride gets a mechanical gear selector. I, I don't like the dial as much, but I will say when you are in drive, if you hop out, uh, as a safety feature, it automatically puts it back in park and engages that electronic parking brake. So there are some benefits to this electronic system. I did mention the 360 cameras outside, putting it in reverse shows you that bird's eye view and that rear view. You do get multiple different camera angles, front, rear, and the like all the way around. Very nice cameras. I do like them. It does show you uh, trajectory based on how you have your wheels turned. So I like that a lot right there. You do have a couple of shortcut buttons, so I can hit that button right there and access the cameras at any point in time. Again, at speed, those cameras don't work. This is using the Uconnect 5 system, so I can actually drag pretty much any of these up to those spots up there and reconfigure exactly what it is that I want quick access to. So if I want Alexa or FameCam or Wi-Fi, any of that can be dragged up into here. You can see I've got my driver profiles, my outside cameras, my fam cam, which gives me a nice view into the back. And you can actually select any seat you want to focus in on. This works best for that third row seat, 
but because due to the panoramic sunroof in this one, the camera is actually behind the second row, but you can actually see my elbow back there. You can see the back of whoever's in the second row, but you can actually focus on any seat you want, even this middle section. Again, this did come in handy on our long road trip. Very nice and convenient there. I also have the Wi-Fi hotspot, so we were able to do some work while on the road. That's very nice. Again, very customizable tray here. And then I have quick access to my climate controls. This is where my heat and ventilation are, and where I can do the slider. I also have hard buttons for the traditional climate controls. This doesn't control the seats. So that's something I kind of wish we had a hard button for because when you put it in reverse, anything you have to use on the screen, like the seat ventilation, can't be accessed while you're in reverse. So just something to note there. This does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And I actually like how you can use multiple devices at once. Go ahead and go over here. You can see Holly's phone was actually paired at along with mine and you can switch between the two you can see right there two active phones it is wireless but chrysler gives you usb-c and usb-a and interfaces for it all up here really good system there's even more you can do with this one so this has rear media in it so i can actually access what the rear seats are watching i can see what's happening on those rear seats i can control them i can lock them out i can play through the vehicle speakers or you can plug in some headphones very 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 good unit again came in handy on our 3000 mile road trip i really like this a lot it uses amazon fire so uh, it is a rather robust system. It did get frozen up and have a few bugs in it. I think that's more of an Amazon problem than it is a Chrysler problem. Just know this is a perhaps the best rear seat entertainment in the business. You can watch two separate things on each of those monitors. And like I said, you can control that all from up here. If the vehicle is stopped, not in park, but stopped you can actually watch on this screen as well you can mirror on all three you can mirror up front to what's on back a lot of configurability here i like that a lot this also has a blu-ray player up here and a usb a if you've got a media stick you want to plug in so a lot of configurability on this uh, rear entertainment unit. We do get a lot of piano black in this, but this little uh, door has been open the entire time because that's where our Qi wireless charger is. Also all the access to our USB cords and such like that. The wireless charger holds a charge, but it makes your phone really hot. This USB-C actually will charge it while you are using stuff like Waze, which are rather battery intensive. A little bit of storage up here as well. Two cup holders, again, more piano black. You can see it's all getting a little bit dusty. I haven't cleaned this up. We've just been kind of wiping it throughout our time with it. I will note this is injection molded plastic, which is nice. You get a little bit of contrasting stitching here, but when it comes to other Chrysler family brand products, for this to be the Pinnacle trim, especially a name like Pinnacle, I'm a little disappointed with the interior appointments. Again, this is the only Chrysler branded product moving into the 2024 model year. So I would expect something like the leather wrap dash that we saw in the TRX. It's just a little bit of a letdown. And when compared to, again, some of the competition with Tahoe, with Telluride, and with Sienna, I would say that this is just okay. It's an okay dash. It's inoffensive, but again, with a name like Pinnacle, you would expect the premium the luxe that the brand has to offer. And we know uh, the family of brands under the Stellantis banner can do interiors very nicely. Another rear uh, child watching feature is this convex mirror that does go up in here. We do have some sunglasses holders right there. We can open the rear doors from in here as well. So I like that, that's a nice touch. You can close it, you can lock the rear controls so that kids can't be playing with it like that a lot you can open the rear hatch you have power buttons for your lighting here all really nice we do have a very large panoramic roof and a suede headliner i really like that again this being the pinnacle trim we get a suede headliner so that's very nice the seats 
caramel colored, they are quilted, they are very nice. They don't look like they belong in a mini minivan, they look like they belong in a very high-end SUV. Again, they are heated and ventilated. We've used both on this road trip because we have had some crazy weather this summer. It's been quite ridiculous, all the weather that we've seen. The seats are very nice. They are a little on the firm side and there is no massage. Kind of wish that these had massage. Opening up the center console, it is just a single tier. I know a lot of other Chrysler family of brands, Stellantis family of brands have two tier uh, center storage. Really wish they had done that here, but you can see it's plenty large for all of our stuff. We do get some power in here along with the USB-A, USB-C. That came in handy. That is the only USB-A for the rear seats uh, that we have seen. We'll show you more of the charging options back there in the back. Overall, a very nice front seat. Coming around to me, you can see I've got plenty of room. Again, two-person memory seat, so very nice. This is a manual tilt and telescoping steering wheel. So that and the rear view mirror are the only things we had to change between Holly and I. And the memory seats are tied to driver profiles. So all those quick access buttons, you can personalize those to whoever's in the driver's seat. Really like that. Plenty of headroom here at 510. Again, this is a multi-position seat. You can raise and lower it, fully power and a four-way power lumbar. So that made it very comfortable. But let's pop out of here. I'm gonna leave it running because it is just that warm out. Oh yeah, we also have a Harman Kardon sound system in this, which has been pretty good for listening to Tucker's dinosaur songs. All right, I've got the key on me, so it didn't like that. But again, I showed you multiple ways to get into the back seat here. These sliding doors work very nice on road trips. We had Tucker riding with us. We had my mother-in-law riding with us. Made very quick and easy work of getting in and out, especially if I had to drop people off on the sides of city streets while I went and searched for downtown Chicago parking or St. Louis parking, things like that. I will call into note before I climb in that this has the uh, Calm package, the um, package that Chrysler and the Autism Society of America work together to create. It's called the Calm Cabin, let me get the name right, which consists of this very nice uh, squishy soft pillow here that comes in addition to the Pinnacles leather quilted uh, lumbar pillows for the back seats here. So we get this additional pillow. We get a weighted blanket that is Chrysler branded. It's very nice. And then we also get the soft seatbelt cover back here, also Chrysler branded, just to take away some of the anxiety of riding in the back seat, take away some of the discomfort for those on the autistic spectrum. I will have a full article written by my brother who is the father of an autistic child with his viewpoint on what Chrysler and the Autism Society of America did here. Very interesting and unique viewpoint. I know uh, I love my nephew to death, uh, but I do not have the same perspective as living with him day in and day out as my brother does. So be sure and check uh, gtgaragetalk.com for his viewpoint on the Calm Cabin package. But I'm gonna go ahead and move all that stuff out of the way. I'm gonna leave my lumbar pillow in place and I'm gonna close the back door here. Oh yeah, I locked it out. So turn off the lockout up front now I can close it. So see just how well that works. Back here, I have practically the same seats as up front, except now I've got my flip up screen here with Amazon Fire TV. You can see I've got everything built into this. Uh, I can log in to my account. It is a touch screen. It does also come with remotes. So we have a remote for each uh, screen back here and a little pocket here for the remote down below map pocket down here map pocket on the other side and you can access tons of stuff in this you can see all the apps uh, that are built into this there are even more that you can download if you're familiar with the amazon fire you know exactly what you can watch on these but yes i can log into my youtube account and watch uh, gt garage talk oh looky right there speaking of the hybrid uh, from Mitsubishi, the plug-in hybrid. There you go. You can see this is limited touch. So I'm gonna have to use the remote to actually watch 
my own YouTube video back here on the back screen. Again, uh, this uh, can be mirrored to that screen. I can do a lot of different um, interactive uh, features with this so I can watch it solely here on this screen. I can mirror it over on to that screen I have an HDMI input so I can play games back here auxiliary output for headphones and a USB-C and that is on both seats in addition to the weighted blanket and everything that came with a calm cabin package I also get the seat back organizer that does work with the rear seat and entertainment system we also get some sunglasses, we get some colors, uh, we got some crayons and some coloring books. We got a lot of really good stuff uh, to make traveling with somebody on the spectrum very comfortable back here. We even get this iHome uh, unit right there. That is the box for it, but we actually have it hidden in the center storage cubby right here which you can see is large enough for more storage. We have a couple cup holders and it does actually stay in a couple different positions. So if I can get my tripod out of the way, we can put it back into place. But this is the iHome unit. It is a sound uh, and light calming unit. Very nice. It plugs and charges USB-A. So I like that very much. Just another kind of zen way to travel back here if uh, that is what your little one needs. I can say from 3,000 miles on the road, this Calm Cabin Package, again, is built with those on the autistic spectrum in mind, but it works well for all kids. So it is something worth looking into. Again, everything uh, is meant to work with this vehicle and work works very well. We do have rear climate controls back here with roof mounted vents. So I like that very much for rear facing car seats and the like. So you can get very comfortable back here. Many times Tucker told us that he was cold back here. So uh, we had to adjust it. You can't adjust the rear climate. This is a tri-zone climate. You can't adjust it from up front, just like everything else. Again, more storage back there. The only charging ports are back here on the sides of the seats. And again, they are USB-C. Looking at the doors, we do have rear sunshades that do a good job of covering a majority of the window, but there's still some exposed uh, spots here as well. And these rear windows, uh, I do have it locked out yet again. They stop right about here, so they don't come down all the way, but they do make a great viewport. And then there is your lock switch right there. And you can open it up and get into the vehicle or get out of the vehicle just like that. I will say again, because these aren't stow and go seats, they are much larger, much taller than the stow and go versions. And they don't flip and fold uh, with a car seat in place for you to get into the back. So for us to get into the back seat, it is all from the passenger side here. You can see it reclines forward and the seat slides forward. But now we can climb into the rear seat. I will show you just how much room we have to climb back here and it's fairly easy. I'm going to go ahead and move all this stuff over. Again, we had this folded for a majority of our time. You can see the rear headrest flip and fold up into place. But sitting back here in the third row, my knees are down where they should be. They're not up underneath my chin. The floor does kind of raise up where I am currently sitting. So I've got a nice angle for my feet. And coming around and looking at the seat in front of me, I've got hard black plastic here. And even pulling it back all the way, I've got plenty of leg room, knee room. So again, going back to Telluride, going back to Tahoe, going back to any of the SUV competition outside of maybe Grand Highlander from Toyota, this thing really does win the battle all the way around. This is a really nice, really comfortable third row seat. It's not too hard, not too firm. Actually quite a bit of cushion to it, more so than any of the front seats. And again, you saw how easily it flips and folds into the back. Plenty good headroom back here, thanks to the conservative boxy shape of this vehicle. And coming back to the sides, I do have a cup holder here. I do have manual sunshades back here. And on the passenger side, I get USB-A, USB-C, a couple cup holders over there, and very nice um, just overall storage options. Again, suede headliner, 
There's the fam cam unit. It is an infrared camera, so it does work at night as well, but you can see just how it would be pointing back at me, but pointing towards those seats up front. That's enough of the interior space. Let's go ahead and climb back behind the steering wheel and see how this thing drives. And oh yes, if you wanna see how to install Tucker's, Tucker's child safety seat, um, be sure and subscribe so you can see our family review and see just what Holly and Tucker think after 3,000 miles on the road. All right, gearheads getting in, turning it to low to use that max regen and setting off in the 2023 Chrysler Pacifica. You are getting this review at the end of over 3,000 miles. So I have put more miles on this test vehicle than I have on many others. And I can give you some more insights into what it would be like to live with day in and day out than some other vehicles we've tested here. One I just came across was uh, pulling out of that driveway right there. The chin of this is a little low. So again, if you're looking at an SUV for its more ruggedness, more upright uh, driving behavior, you're gonna like that a little bit better than the Chrysler Pacifica. Again, it gets good fuel economy because it rides down very low. And speaking of that fuel economy, it gets about 30 MPG combined on gas only. We're seeing 28.7 in our 3,000 plus miles with it. And that is a mixture of gas and electric. So you figure out exactly what it'll be like for you. Again, going back to the Toyota Sienna, they're claiming a 35 across the board. So where this thing is really happiest, being that it's a plug-in hybrid, that you really can't control anything of the plug-in hybridness of it, it uses all of those electric miles first and foremost, and then goes into normal electric mode after that. So where this would totally beat the Sienna on fuel efficiency, fuel economy, is in your regular commute, driving around, stop and go traffic. As long as you are in the, eh, we'll say ballpark of 30 miles day in and day out. Again, I saw 38 when I first started this up today. We're now at 78% after filming with 25 miles of range and it takes about eight hours to charge overnight with our at-home charging system sponsored by Electron. Thank you so much. Link to that one down in the description below. But especially here in low mode in stop and go city traffic through neighborhoods like this one, it really is its happy place right here. It does fairly good on the highway as well. It is a very, very comfortable cruiser. I attribute that one to its low riding nature. It's not super high, super tall. The battery adds a little extra weight down low because again, it's where the stow and go would be. So that improves the ride of it. And then it's got those 18 inch wheels with lots of sidewall on those tires. So all of that combines to a very calm, comfortable ride. The acceleration on this, because it really leans heavy on that electric motor, it's rather quick. It's very quick, actually, quicker than the 260 uh, horsepower would lead you to believe. In fact, I kind of joke that this is the dad rod of the bunch because it is front drive only and it is using that electric motor. I have spun the wheels <laughs> uh, when setting off in this one. So those fuel efficient tires are doing what they can with all that instantaneous electric torque. It's a fun vehicle, puts a smile on your face. But again, this really is meant for long haul cruising or like I said, jaunts through town using all that electricity instead of gasoline at which point the plug-in nature of this really really shines in fact before we set off on our road trip i don't think we used a single drop of gas in this it's really quite crazy the trip computer even tells you how many miles you've used of gas and electricity and it's kind of a fun game just to see how much uh, electricity we can use and how little gas we can use I will say on our long road trip, uh, the gasoline engine did kick in at highway speeds and after all the electricity was depleted, and then it was just your more or less standard hybrid. I will say also in low mode with that max region on and uh, going down through the Paladuro Canyon and 
the Panhandle of Texas, for instance, was actually able to put several miles on the electric uh, battery components of this simply by the regeneration alone. Granted, I used all of that and then some getting it up out of the canyon, but that's neither here nor there. That is the only really way uh, you could put battery back in, or power back into the battery outside of plugging it in. Otherwise, very calm, very comfortable vehicle, works very well. Tucker loves it because it's very easy for him to get in and out of it, open the doors, close the doors, he loves it. Works well for children, works well for mother-in-laws as well. So we had my mother-in-law on the trip with us, again, dropping off on city streets, trying to go to Wrigley for a baseball game, it made for a very easy and convenient way to drop her off. I can just hit the button, she pops out, and I close the door and set off on my way. It's a really good chauffeur vehicle <laughs> above all other things, and it rides very well. So if you're in the market through for a three row family hauler and you're not checking out a minivan, especially this Chrysler Pacifica, you need to rethink your things. Hashtag save the minivans. Last thing I will call to note is the build quality of this one. Typically we say vehicles that we're testing are quiet and rattle free. This one did have some little ghost phantom rattle up here on the driver's side that persisted the entire time we had it. Not quite sure where it was coming from. Kind of sounded like it was in the dash or in the door. Could not discover its source or its nature. So that is one thing to note. And then again, I already mentioned Chrysler products uh, from Jeep and Ram do have nicer overall interiors than this one, which is a little bit of a letdown when you are slapping a name or a trim like Pinnacle on it. Just food for thought there. Again, if you want to see our family review on our 3,000 mile road trip, uh, be sure and find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, all the things at GT Garage Talk. You can see highlights from our Route 66 road trip, all the roadside attractions that we found really nice. And this Chrysler Pacifica photos very well in many different locations across the world or at least the Western world here in the continental US. Uh, you can read more about this vehicle, including my brother's article on that calm cabin package over at gtgaragetalk.com. Be sure and hit the like, follow, comment, subscribe, all the things to let the algorithms know to show you more content from us. But as for me, in the ventilated front seat of the Chrysler Pacifica, until next time, gearheads, bye.